If you're not happy with the camera standing here, okay, you move. The society has changed. What was acceptable 30 years ago is no longer acceptable <gasps> now. This weekend alone, there have been two attacks on Gardaí. The Minister for Justice is responsible for law and order in this country. As a society, we have to, we have to reclaim our streets. Charlie, that's a 140. <laughs> Fuck you! And the only way to reclaim our streets is to restore law and order. <laughs> There's only one force to do that, and that's on Garda Shea Connor. So my name is Shauna Nocton, and I'm attached to Bridewell Guard Station in Dublin 7. It's north inner city in Dublin. I'm working here since December 2017, so just five and a half years. I'm attached to the community policing unit and I suppose my day-to-day -day, uh, job would be working with the community, identifying vulnerable people, schools talks with primary and post-primary, identifying the stakeholders and residential groups um, in the area. Charlie Delta 140 to control. Part of um, our day-to-day being out on the beat or in mobile patrol, and we'll be identifying hotspots in the district um, for drug dealing and uh, drug use, and where drug dealers would be kind of hanging around and that kind of thing. So our job then is to identify it. How are you? Hi. Have you went on yet? Approach and engage with these people, and if it warrants, then to perform a drug search under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Okay, so you're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so. But Anthony, say we'll be taken down to writing and maybe given an evidence, okay? So basically what I'm just after doing there is cautioning you, okay? So basically what that means in ordinary language is you don't have to say anything unless you wish to do so, but whatever you say in response to what I'm saying to you, okay, will be taken down and maybe given an evidence at a future court date or anything like that, okay? So do you understand uh, what's after happening? You know, the people want to see more high visibility policing on the streets and in uniform. That's yours, is it? You pop it up to me. Let's have a look at it. Is it yours, yeah? We're just stickers saying it's yours. You know, it's an area known for drugs, people acting suspiciously, strong smell of cannabis or other illegal substances, um, or we actually observe drug transactions taking place. Um, what's the location for your patrol? Dorset Street, Flats, please control. Roger. And so we'd approach people and depending on case-by-case -case situation, be it with consent or utilising our power under the Misuse of Drugs Act, Section 23 search. One uh, search here. This area is uh, very well known for drugs and drug dealing, okay? Cuba, Cuba, Cuba. His name is Arthur. <laughs> A lot of people under the influence of intoxicants, be it drugs or alcohol, would probably be the most prevalent antisocial behaviour um, issues that we will come up against. The uh, vitriol and the abuse that's been directed at the guards, assaulting guards, and there is no, seems to be no uh, support for the guards in relation to that. Footage has been posted online capturing a Garda car being rammed twice by two stolen cars during an incident in the Cherry Orchard area of Dublin. The Public Order Act, which is nearly 30 years old, needs to be reviewed with a specific offence for uh, directing abuse towards a member of Angardi Shikona. There's Bally Firm, it's Ratzler. Yeah. How's your colleague? Yeah, how's your colleague? Is your colleague all right? Is he? Yeah. I heard he was screaming and begging for mercy. The boys in Ballier don't take mercy. No mercy from the Ballier boys. We have seen a number of incidences in recent weeks where Gardaí have been seriously injured. It's very worrying to see that assaults on Gardaí have incre increased and of course for us in AGSI what we worry about is that society becomes tolerant of that kind of behaviour. One of you got kicked the shit out of the other night, one of you did, you know that. Your car's getting rammed left, right and centre. Why? 
Because you're, because your attitude, man. Good luck now. Go on. Go on. Go do your job. Do your drive on, because I said so. Go on. Drive on. Drive on, because I told you to. Rat. Well, the rise in assaults are attributed down to the behaviour of the criminals engaged in that activity. And what's happened with them is they're gaining more confidence because they know that the Gardaí are becoming more risk averse. And they know that they have friends who will video record on phones intrusively on the Gardaí and give a select episode then off to the likes of an investigation unit like the Ombudsman Commission. <laughs> We believe assaults on Gardaí, they go against the rule of law and in policing a civilised society the rule of law must be upheld at all times and if you think that it's acceptable to assault the very people that are tasked with enforcing the rule of law then really there's no grounds for a civilised society at all. I'd say that the first thing is the stats, they're probably under representative of what's actually out there. Uh, there's an apathy, uh, the, the, the drinking and the drug taking. Uh, become normalised and it's only when there's a, a rock comes through a window or there's someone actually attacked that things will be reported. Large fight is ongoing on the 41 Charlie inbound. Bus was pulled over a hazard bomb between Bins Bridge and Dorset Street inbound. Someone is unfortunate enough uh, to get attacked. There's a physical but a psychological uh, damage there. And it was literally five minutes ago, was it? And I, I don't think it's for for young people, especially uh, uh, young women, I don't think it's a, a safe place anymore. A teenage girl was brutally assaulted by a group of men near the Civic Centre in Ballyfermot on Thursday night. Investigating Gardaí are appealing for anyone with dashcam footage who may have been in the area at the time to come forward. We just got off the bus and we were walking towards my friend's house and there was an altercation. My phone rang and it was, it was her number and when I answered it, it was her friend. So I knew immediately something was wrong. And I was just like yelling into the phone, is she okay, is she okay? Is she alive? I live in Bally Fair, but like stuff like this just happens like kind of, and um, but I didn't think it was gonna be like this intense or severe. I don't actually remember seeing or feeling me getting hit with the hurl, but I just remember then waking up and like, obviously like my face was bleeding and stuff. So yeah, afterwards, like I was, on the ground, like all these people around me, I didn't know what was going on. And then I was like, okay, I actually think I might die. Like getting put in an ambulance and all, and telling me that I can't move because like I could get paralyzed because like of how I fell and all, like, and it was just like crazy. Like it was just so, like, the scariest thing ever. Like I, just, like, I don't really think about like my future, like I ain't got to do with this. Cause I've kind of just now accepted like this is, and it's kind of like hard to think of, but like when I'm like 30 and I, I'm like a grown woman, like I'm just, just gonna be like, what's on my face, you know? Uh... The punishments need to fit the crime. Yeah. The, these, these men or women who hurt other people are just getting to walk away too lightly. And it had broken all of the bones in my face and made me obviously lose my eye. How can somebody do that to me? and this be something that's going to be on my face now for the rest of my life. And they just don't even have a care for you, like, at the least. Like, I was like, so what is it that's stopping them from living a normal life now? Do you know what I mean? Like, they had girlfriends, they had, like, friends and all that, that, like, are saying, oh, but it's your word against them. Yeah, but look at my face and look at them. You know what I mean? Like, it's just really confusing, like. There has to be a deterrent, and I think that's the only way. When, when you have... Judges just letting people walk away with community service or yeah, a yeah, fine yeah. for like completely changing somebody's life. It's it's not okay. Being told today that what happened to me and the life that I've lost is only worth four and a half years obviously isn't the best thing to hear. I have to be like this now for the rest of my life. And in four and a half years' time, he'll be out and about, and just, I don't really feel like these consequences are really um, just justified, considering you know how I have to be now for the rest of my life. That's it. Really. The people in authority are going to have to do something different, and that means the politicians. 
And the, the only thing different we can do is make the sentences harsh enough for the people to carry out these atrocities and so that they, it will deter them and put a physical presence out there. Pictures posted by Evan Summers shows the horrific injuries he received during an attack at the early hours of yesterday morning, which include a fractured eye socket, two fractures to his ankle and a dislocation. Evan had been socialising in the George and was waiting for a taxi on Dame Street at around 3.30am. The 23-year-old says he was subjected to homophobic slurs before being knocked to the ground by a stranger. We were walking down Dame Street at about half three, just looking for a taxi. Um, and basically this man approached us and, um, you know, started calling particularly me names and, um, you know, on multiple, multiple times called me like a faggot and, you know, so it became really clear kind of, you know, what was happening very, very quickly. Um, and eventually then he actually uh, punched me in the face. He ended up fracturing my right eye socket. Um, and then there were two fractures in my left ankle. It's hard to imagine just from enjoying a night out, kind of, you know, a casual night, doing karaoke, you know, having a nice time, you know, to immediately kind of after leaving that happening, you know, unprovoked. Like, it could happen to me, it could happen to anyone, and unfortunately it's happened since, you know, there's been, like, targeted attacks since and random attacks, and I think there's this sense of unease kind of at the moment in Dublin, you know, there's so much kind of going on and it feels like there's just a lot of violence and kind of a lot of hate at the moment and it's really unfortunate so you know. Tonish the Leo Varadkar is among those condemning the attack saying he was shocked and appalled while singer Boy George also tweeted his support for Evan. Lots of people actually come to me and say and um, you know something similar happened to them and they were attacked for similar reasons and you know their stories probably weren't reported or you know weren't as heavily discussed which is a shame you know so just be, I'm just one person but it's happened to so many and unfortunately it's going to continue to happen and you know steps need to be taken kind of to you know prevent that I think. I have to be honest the immediate response from the Gardaí was really good and um, I'd emails from different Gardaí there was you know someone appointed to suppose my case and um, quite quickly and you know within a day or two I received calls and you know Part of me thinks that's because of the media attention and then I think once that died down a little bit I kind of haven't really heard anything like any time I've heard it's me reaching out and then you know there's just kind of no update and I think when attacks like this happen you know I, I, the person should be held kind of accountable or responsible and you know that's what's going to send a message to people in a similar position to me that oh something's been done you know. Garthi say they're investigating the attack, including any hate-related motivation, and are appealing for witnesses. No arrests have yet been made. Train workers, bus workers, they're ordinary people, they're ordinary men and women. They want to go out to work and feel safe. Show your face! Show your fucking face! drivers have been assaulted 429 times over the last five years, while there have been nearly 7,000 reports of antisocial behaviour to Lewis operator Transdev over the same period. Well, what we've seen uh, late last year and continuing on to this year uh, is just ever-increasing numbers of, of missile thrown uh, attacks. Train workers, bus workers, they're ordinary people, they're ordinary men and women. They want to go out to work and feel safe. This is not fucking right. Who the fuck in their right minds? I wouldn't mind. I can hear the shouting from over here. Oh, lads, Jesus Christ. Get off the bus. Who wants to go into work knowing that they're going to be racially abused, threatened, spat at, have a, a mob surround the bus? Uh, nobody should have to go to work to experience that. Come on, you can't show his face. Show your 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 face! Show your face! Show your fucking face! That's without the, the unfortunate colleagues that have been physically attacked. You know, some of them um, haven't come back to work. 
The National Bus and Rail Union says five bus drivers have been assaulted in recent weeks, while there's also been an increase in passengers facing verbal and physical abuse and that the assaults are becoming more vicious. It's prompted the union to renew calls for a dedicated Garda unit to police public transport. There's been a five-fold increase, and that's without the, the, the bus companies. So, the, the, yeah, the problem is getting worse. Oh, 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 you know, we have tried to get a, a, a bus or a rail worker uh, to do an interview in relation to antisocial behaviour, uh, but there's a nervousness there because they, they, they don't obviously feel comfortable that they'll appear on, on a show and all of a sudden they're, they're out there on, a, on a, a platform in a rail carriage or on a bus and, and they're recognised and, and attacked. There's a lot of, of bus drivers and, 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 and rail workers, uh, they look for alternative as well. Look, I'm not going back onto that platform or that train or that bus. There's legislation there that, that workers should have a safe place to work. Uh, and the obligation is on the employer uh, to make sure to take all the reasonable steps they can to make sure it's safe. It does, it becomes sort of normalised. You know, and you'd wonder if you, if you look to the continental Europe, uh, you don't see that sort of behaviour on your public transport. People have a respect. I mean, it's under the separation of powers, it's the Iraqis that have the power to create the law, and they're the ones that are ultimately responsible for the problem we have in society. So it's called staff to come in there just for a fight and progress there in Tunconda. So we might just go down and assist the local unit that's going. So going to calls like this, um, we'll be utilising the guarded decision-making model, uh, gathering information from command and control. Where are you seeing? Up there. Where's the Upstairs. Upstairs. Upstairs, yeah. Arriving then at scene and assessing the situation, see if there's any threat to us or members of the public. Get out. Get out. Get out. I suppose another part then would be identifying key witnesses that would be able to provide uh, relevant and appropriate information, um, assessing if anyone requires medical treatment or if an ambulance is required or if we ourselves uh, require additional resources to come and give us a dig out. Can I get your, uh, number, your name and number? And then in the event then that arrest has to be made, then the arrest will be made at scene. No hassle. Sounds. Thanks for the Thank you. Yeah, no hassle. People that commit these atrocities don't give a damn for CCTV. They don't really care if their, if their face is shown. He pulled it all off! Fuck's sake! He's caught my hand! Oh my god! Oh, someone's caught my leg! People are going to use public transport if it's not safe. It has to be safe. So the two have to be tied together. And I mean, that's a, a policy decision by government. At the moment, they're not of a mind to fund a dedicated guarded transport unit. Uh, that funding is not there. They're not of a mind to even to establish it. But I think the, all the investment in public transport is for not if they don't do that. At some stage, they're going to have to realise that they have to do it. They have to link the two. Unfortunately, I had a, a young girl one day threatened with a knife in a bus um, and the guards had to come to, to take the individual out of the bus. Uh, I have had many fights in malaise. Uh, I remember one uh, Patrick's Day where the upper slew in the bus was, was completely obliterated. There, there, there was uh, blood and windows smashed and seats ripped up. So that was, that was drink fueled. Uh, loads of incidents of, 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 of drug taking. And, uh, fights and assaults. They can bring a, a bag of bottles on, drink them, throw them on the floor, uh, light up a joint, smoke crack cocaine, rob someone's phone. Inside, I can still, you know, Imagine I can create that image of the incidents. It's still there. So yes, definitely, I am very fearful. Definitely, specifically when I'm traveling in the Lewis. So yeah.
I was trembling. My 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 legs. I couldn't stand there for a while. My legs were trembling because of that incident. I, I could feel my heart pounding. That it, the amount of fear it was because something of this in this incident has nothing has happened with me any time before. Maybe the uh, guard or the security they are lacking the staffs. I, I think I have seen so many people around here who have similar stories, similar incidents, this sort of behavior, this anti-social behavior, and what exactly they are trying to do with us. I, I don't know. And they can be very brutal, I believe. I, I, I never had experienced such incident back in India, to be very honest. This was the first incident, and that was the reason I was so taken aback, and it's still terrifying me. So, yeah. There is a lot of seats to be on the Lewis, which is fantastic, and it's very good quality footage as well. Like so, and um, that helps us in our investigations in for social behaviour. That if people are coming forward into the station, that you know we can obtain CCTV footage to help us with our investigation. Then. Unfortunately, we're operating in an environment where there actually is falling numbers of Gardaí, so I don't think it's feasible to suggest that we could actually provide an additional unit to cover transport hubs and transport networks across the entire nation. Do I divide it? So from being out on B patrol and mobile patrol, um, it is obvious that some areas are busier than others um, for antisocial behaviour and drug dealing and drug taking. Um, so it's, it's just us trying to stamp out um, that behaviour that's taking place. Yeah. And we're actually for Section 91 for Offensive Weapon Act, OK? Your caution as it follows, OK? You're not bringing attention to, so to, to say take it down right and give evidence, OK? No reply for that? No reply, no. If they're concealed on their person or in a bag, they, they will tell you the majority of the time. Or if they've drug paraphernalia on them, they will remove it. It works in here, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This one? In that one. You've, in you've a, needles? In a case. You've needles in this one? Yeah, okay. Look, okay. thanks for letting me know. So, works, I suppose, would be you know a term that guards a lot of the time would use on the street. Um, when speaking with drug users, we'd ask, you know, do you have any works on you? And you know, they know what we mean. What we mean by that is if they have any needles or sharps on them if they're active drug users. Uh, Control, can you just stick us down waiting for prisoner transport there from Charlie Delta 120? We're heading back to the Bridewell with one prisoner, please. 99.9% .9 of the time, um, drug users will let you know that they would have you know needles or uncapped or sharps on them. Big hop up, come on. We'll have them in the back of the patrol uh, cars, so, you know, nobody wants to get pricked by a needle when they're working. You can buy, sell and take drugs openly on the streets of the city centre. What are you talking about? You're not fucking moving the fuck off. Hi guys, come here. I'm part of the community policing team nice. in the Bridewell. One of my roles and responsibilities is to have what we call a SAP area. Lads, come here. Wait, William, wait, wait. Come here. Which is a small area of policing where I'm the dedicated guard um, of a particular area within the district. And I suppose I would work as kind of a liaison between um, residents and stakeholders uh, in the area. What happened to your face? So, like in my experience, um, when we receive reports of phone snatches or thefts from person, um, the people are selling them on for low value. Connor, Connor, you're in possession of stolen property. Okay, that's the long and short of it. Okay, okay. Tell you where about, please. Okay, that belongs to some woman. Okay. And unfortunately, we're seeing that it's to feed their habit. Now, into the van, Connor. You forgot to have the coffee, okay? You see that a lot of the times that comes from like it's just even a simple drug search, you know, <laughs> transpires and into something else like your man is handling uh, in possession of stolen property. You have the antisocial behaviour which is captured under public order legislation and, and by and large the Gardaí are only reporting uh, detected crime in that category. The reality of it is, there's a lot more crime happening. I'll, I'll jump off there. There's two lads down there, yeah. On the first bit. I'll meet you over there, okay? 
The drug issue has been reported many times before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, seven, 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 okay, so a shot. Sean. The rest of the What are you talking so about? They're okay. not fucking mine, the fuck off. Okay. Go fuck yourself, Here, not mine. Mind the language. Mind the language. No, you mind go the fuck yourself, as well, you Mind the language. All right, okay. As part of our job, like we do come up against um, irate individuals or people that are frustrated. Um, you know, it, it, I hate to say it, that it does come part and parcel with the job. Fuck you! There are elements within society that don't believe in the rule of law, they don't believe in acting in a civilised manner, and they don't believe in acting in the best interest of the communities that we're trying to serve. And so for some people, there is only a singular agenda, and that's an agenda to cause trouble, to be troublesome, uh, to cause difficulty for the colleagues uh, that I have within AGSI, and that cannot be acceptable. Did you take anything today? I mean, jokes? No. Did you? No. Did you touch any kids today? Did you? No, you definitely did. Because you're a pedophile. I was a pedophile. You know he's a pedophile? He's arrested there for Section 15. Well, the Misuse of Drugs Act, like God said, the quantity that he has on him there. Section 15 is the Misuse of Drugs Act. Um, that relates to, for the purpose of sale of supply. So it would be in regards to the guards seeing a transaction taking place um, between individuals or in the event after being uh, stopped and searched and a quantity of drugs found on their person that we deem it um, not for simple possession in the sense that's for personal use, that there will be a quantity that they will be supplying it or if for, the, for sale. Like that antisocial behaviour is that, like, you know, it's constantly annoying the residents. And like decent people that are living in around the area, like, and you know, it's intimidating for them if they want to go out for a walk in the evening or walk the dog or whatever, like, you know, and then they have all these young lads, like, hanging around dealing like her, not even dealing, but just sitting there smoking joints and that kind of thing. You know, it is intimidating for, for everyone walking around like. Part of um, our day to day being out on the beach or in mobile patrol, um, we'll be identifying hotspots in the district um, for drug dealing and uh, drug use. The people have um, huge confidence now that they can actually transact their deals without fear of being detected. And is this all yours here? Is this your work here? Yeah? We can perform a, a search um, on the street if it's suitable to do so and it's appropriate. If it's not appropriate to perform a search on the roadside or wherever you know the place is, um, we can also bring the person back to the station to perform the search in the station then if it's, if it's more appropriate at that stage to do that. We have a society where drugs and people who are high on drugs uh, create all kinds of issues for Angarda Siakana. Uh, policing uh, the population is vastly different. We have a much increased population. We have decreasing numbers in Angarda Siakana. That is only a mix that's going to cause resource issues for us. Our police are under-resourced and uh, do not have sufficient resources, but I think the members that I represent do a very fine job for what they have and are very committed. We will always be out there to do what we can to keep the community safe and to keep people safe. We'd like to do it better and we think we are being failed by systems and by the level of investment, but I don't think there's any no-go area anywhere in this country or anywhere the guards aren't actually in control of the streets. There is um, someone right there found on this person um, of heroin or dimorphine, so street name heroin there. So. It's just suspected there, okay? Obviously there's a lot of addiction in Dublin um, and around the city centre and, and that's something that as, as guards we're not going to stop on our own and, and, and unfortunately we just have to kind of work, work with it. We just get one of the lads to do that there. Thanks. There's a level of audaciousness there in relation to drug dealing outside public premises in full view of uh, everybody in the street and they, 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 have a, they probably have a confidence that they're not going to be challenged on the issue, again, simply because there's not enough, a high enough presence on the street. There are a lot of business owners who are in a state of desperation in relation to that because they're witnessing it. They're worried about their businesses. They're worried will the customers come to their premises. And so that has to be tackled. It's just not OK that businesses cannot trade safely and people and tourists cannot visit and, and enjoy the city without having to, to witness um, what we see on an ongoing basis. And then it's that feeling of being unsafe. 
Um, like within our first three months of trading, the shop was cordoned off twice as a crime scene. They're dealing outside businesses' premises. They're frightening the business owners. The business owners are absolutely frustrated. And there's the, all these social problems being exposed onto our national promenade. When we were fitting out the premises, it became quite apparent quite quickly uh, that there was a significant issue. So pretty much all day, every day, we noticed that uh, groups and gangs of people, very often wearing hooded jackets and masks pulled up over their faces, were dealing drugs right outside the door. There was no attempt to hide this. It was very obvious, it was very visible, it was very blatant. Uh, they were dealing out drugs, handing out uh, money, and then taking and using the drugs um, right outside the shop. There were times when we'd be ringing Pier Street seven, eight, nine times a day, and we could have rang them 20 or 30 times. Um, that's how frequent and that's how relentless the drug dealing and the drug using has been um, uh, outside the window on the corner of Aston Quay. It should never be okay and it should never be accepted for people to deal drugs openly, visibly, prominently without any fear of being caught in the centre of the city. I don't think that should ever be tolerated. The guards have stepped up their presence and they are doing more um, targeting uh, around this particular area and it is working and we have seen uh, a reduction uh, in the antisocial behaviour that has been so challenging uh, for my business and I think it would be wonderful if that was continued. <laughs> My shop is in the centre of the city and I absolutely love trading here and despite all of the issues that we've had to deal with, I love this location. I look out the window and I can see the statue of Daniel O'Connell, we've the Trinity campus on one side, we've Phoenix Park on the other. There's so much going on here, we're on the corner of Tel Temple Bar, it's vibrant, it's buzzy, it's atmospheric, it's rich in history, it's rich in culture. So I'm absolutely not giving up on this location. And I genuinely believe that at a station level, they're doing all they can to try to address these issues. I just think at a national level and at a political level, this needs to be higher up the list of priorities. You can buy, sell and take drugs openly and, uh, on the streets of the city centre. You can't do that outside the Eiffel Tower in Paris. You can't do it outside the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. You can't do it outside Big Ben in London. So you should not be able to do it 100 metres from O'Connell Bridge. Let the guards go out. We want to do our job. The public wants to do our job. What's been sold as progress is actually diminishing our presence on the street. Well, we are aware that last year there was funding provided to recruit 800 Gardaí into the Garda organisation. However, only over 120 were actually recruited into it. Take 109 resignations and almost uh, 400 retirees out of that and the numbers add up. This is why we're seeing a falling Garda numbers. If you speak to the AGSI and the GRA, they tell you that the numbers that are promised, the 1,000 yards or 500 yards, no, there's, there's 20 and 30 coming out. And if they're getting posted to Dublin, they're not coming because they can't get accommodation. So there has to be outside the box thinking, OK, well, maybe the guard should provide guard accommodation, you know. I mean, that'll solve that. You know, if you keep solving one problem, you'll solve another and another. Us guards on, on the ground, like, of course, we'd love, you know, more guards, you know, out and about, share the workload, especially for us, and then for our community to feel safer, 100%. We'd love for, for more numbers, especially in our district and throughout the North Central Division. Not only are we asking the same group of people, but it's actually a diminishing group of people to shoulder that burden, and it's just, it's unsustainable and it's unrealistic to expect the members that I represent to be able to just go back to the same well and take more and more and more and something has to give and something has to be done to address the current recruitment and retention crisis. 
So if I were the Minister for Justice, I would be having a serious partnership meeting with the Garda Commissioner and asking him to address why are people asking the question constantly, where are the Gardaí? They promised to deliver on a higher visibility on the street. It's not happening. People want to see that uniform presence on the street, on patrol, that they can prevent crime, interact with the public and reassure them and give them the perception that there is a presence and that criminality and wrongdoing will be tackled. And there is no substitute for that. There's no technology, nothing else can replace that for the peace of mind of the public and the effectiveness of policing. And it all comes back to resources, personnel, and utilising the resources you have more effectively, doing away with the nonsense, the bureaucracy, the box ticking, the repetitive bureaucracy, let the guards go out. We want to do our job. The public wants to do our job. The things that are stopping us are actually, a lot of them are internal processes. And what's been sold as progress is actually diminishing our presence on the street. I'm fully supportive of our colleagues in, in the GRA and IGSI. I mean, they have some wants they need to protect it as well. They can't just be thrown out there uh, without the resources and without the equipment. So they need to be uh, tilled up for everything that they require. Uh, to do the job to keep the rest of us safe. Of course, we hear the reasons why people are leaving. They don't see the, the job opportunity. They feel they're overworked. They don't feel their pay and certainly their pension conditions are good. Uh, they think the industry is over-regulated. They're tied to screens. It's too bureaucratic. Uh, the assaults on members are all too frequent. Uh, their images are posted all over social media, taken in an out-of-context situation. And that's a lot of pressure for people to bear. And if there's better jobs elsewhere that are more attractive, without all of those things that come with being a member of Angarda Síochána now, then people will leave. The Garda Síochána Inspectorate have stated that generally police technology in Ireland is in and around 30 years behind most comparable police services. On the issue of body cams, I, I really do welcome uh, your support in relation to that. I think it's a very important tool that we can give the Gardaí. I find it slightly ironic that the only people at sometimes protests and public events without a camera are the Gardaí. I think that is illogical, ironic and at times dangerous uh, to the Gardaí and on occasion to the public. When the Gardaí get the body cams, I think, and I'm going to anticipate, that the judiciary are going to be shocked when they see the level of vitriol that's directed at the guards and what they have to put up with. So it'll allow them to have a three-dimensional view of what the Gardaí are seeing on the street. Yeah, I think there's been too obstructive commentary in relation to the, uh, the body cam. Uh, I do think it should be trialled. It should be trialled in the Dublin metropolitan area to where the uh, anti-social issues are most prevalent. Uh, you could look at the likes of Ballyfermot, for example, that's uh, what's happened out there. The system is stacked in favour of offenders, the very people who are committing the assaults, who f seem to act with impunity that you're talking about in the city centre, that the system is geared to protect them and encourage their bad behaviour and, and, and to just restrict guards and, and going out and doing their job. What's your tone with me, OK? What's your tone? What's your tone? And calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Highly tense situations, maybe domestic violence situations, protests, um, public order situations, the arrest of offenders, and certainly can provide uh, probably a truer reflection of an incident than uh, an out-of-context snapshot of it on a, some social media platform. This technology has the potential to deter attacks on Garda members, and where attacks do occur, it can provide strong evidence to bring perpetrators to justice. When I say that I am of the firm belief that criminals do not have a right to privacy such that it can aid them to evade investigation, arrest or prosecution. In the current environment, we need Angarda Síochána to have the tools and the resources to combat crime and to fulfil their primary duty protecting the public. There are compelling reasons why they should be allowed access to technology, why they should be allowed access to body cams and there are strict requirements under law to introduce clear and sufficient safeguards uh, around it. There's a reason they are effective and we want to see them there as a, as, a, as a layer of protection and perhaps a preventative measure, but they only can be part of a suite of measures. They alone will not solve the problems. The operation model that they talk about, about kind of centralising super stations, creating bigger divisions so that you could have more people out in the streets, 
is not happening. So these are the type of questions that should be uh, asked of the Commissioner and the Commissioner should be called on to respond to that and say what's his plan and, and it's not just the theoretical plans and showing graphs and the high number of rests. It's the quality of the measurement of how many people are going to be out on the beat today. I really think that the Assistant Commissioner for the Dublin Metropolitan Area needs to take ownership for this particular issue and needs to be accountable. We need strategic, targeted, proactive measures that are appropriately and fully resourced in order to tackle this. You need mandatory sentencing. You need to take these people off the streets. Why people would want to kind of hurt someone physically or verbally or what, how they think they have the right, you know? We should all be able to walk through Dublin and be safe and be unharmed and, you know, not kind of fear for, fear for our lives or, to a lesser extent, fear of getting attacked. We didn't elect the Catholic Commissioner. And we elected the politicians. And it's up to the Minister for Justice and the Minister for Transport to say, we need this, make it happen because otherwise we're going to be in this situation next month, next year, and it's only going to get worse. Now government need to step up and step into that space because we need legislation that makes it uh, mandatory sentencing for people who do assault emergency frontline workers. And that sends out a very clear message that if you, if you engage in that type of behaviour, there will be a punishment for it. I'm very much an admirer of what they did in New York in relation to the zero tolerance and they focused on the quality of arrests, the targeting of hotspots, the bringing down crime and that restored the confidence and still goes on till this day. So I don't know why they didn't follow a model like that and it's not too late to follow that model. I'd be very cynical of the political establishment. I don't think they have the enthusiasm to actually with their eyes around the next election and that's all.